word problem solving strategy. This section will show a strategy specifically designed for solving word problems. Word problem woes. So many students see a word problem and mentally shut down because they perceive it to be much more difficult. However, if you follow the steps of the kudos method, you will take the words out of the word problem and turn it into a simple calculation problem. The kudos method. K-U-D-O-S stands for known, unknown, definition, output, and substantiation. Step K. Known. We must identify what is known or given in the problem. For example, use units to help identify information. If it says a car travels 15.2 meters, that tells you the meters is a distance unit, so they have just told us a distance. We can also write information to symbolize it. In that case, we could write D equals 15.2 meters. And there may be implied information. A book is accelerating across the table means there is a net force which causes the acceleration. Step U, the unknown. We must identify what is being asked what we're looking for, what we want to solve for. For example, what is the problem looking for? If it says how many newtons, we're looking for a force. In that particular case, we're looking for the variable F, which is in newtons. This helps us focus on what we're looking for, the goal or solution. Step D, definition. Define needed information. Tools to help solve the problem. For example, we may need to convert units. Velocity might be converted from kilometers per hour to meters per second. We may need to do some algebraic rearranging, say, changing our velocity formula solved for V into a distance formula solved for D. And we also might need constants, such as the acceleration from gravity, G. You may know these, or you may need to look them up. And finally, if there is something that you need that you can't find, go after it. Look for it through your book, Notes, Instructor. Step O, Output. Find the output, or answer, from your solution. For example, if you're plugging or substituting in values into your equation, you can arrive at an answer for your unknown. You may also need to utilize constants or arrive at that value. And you might need to make sure that your answer has the proper unit or has a unit at all with the answer. Step S, substantiation. Here is where you will mentally check your answer. For example, are the results even possible or in the correct ballpark? Should it be 10,000 when you get 100, or vice versa? The units. When solving for mass, you should get a mass unit, for example. And significant figures. Don't forget, when multiplying and dividing, you should have the least number of significant figures in your answer and when adding and subtracting, the least number of decimal places. 
connecting the known and the unknown. One of the hardest things for students to do is determining how to get from where you are, the known, to the unknown. This is the problem-solving procedure. Using symbols effectively. Physics uses so many symbols that are so similar it can quickly become confusing. Try to label your symbols with something meaningful to you. This will help you associate them with what they represent. For example, if you're writing the mass of a proton instead of m1, make it m sub p for mass of a proton. If you want to represent the momentum of a linebacker, instead of P1, you could make it P sub L. The subscript L represents linebacker. And velocities of cars could be V sub C. Kudos example number one. What's the net force if a girl pulls with 27 newtons and a boy pulls with 14 newtons in the other direction? Step 1. The known. They tell us the force of the girl, the force of the boy, in the opposite direction. The unknown. We are looking to find the net force, F net. The definition. You need to recall that the net force is the sum of all the forces acting on an object. The output. Calculating for this example is a simple matter of taking 27 newtons and subtracting 14 newtons. Our substantiation, we can check that it's a reasonable answer with a correct unit and the correct number of significant figures. Kudos example number two. Find the focal length of a mirror if a 2.0 centimeter tall object is 5.0 centimeters from the mirror with a 4.0 centimeter tall image. Step one the known. The height of the object is given. The object distance is given. And the height of the image is given. The unknown. We are looking for a focal length, f, which would be in centimeters. The definition. We might use our focal length equation or lens equation. We also might use our magnification, or height of an object and image equation. For our, our output, we will need to first calculate our image distance. From there, we can use that bit of information in our lens equation to finally find a focal length. This is a more complicated two-step problem. For our substantiation, 10 centimeters is a reasonable answer, centimeters being the correct unit, and the number of significant figures is correct also. Kudos example number three. Find the current of a circuit with a 30.0 volt battery and a 10.0 ohm resistor. For the known, we are given 30.0 volts. That's a voltage. We're also given 10.0 ohms. That's a resistance. For the unknown, we are looking to find the current in amps or amperes. For the definition, we will probably have to use a formula, which is Ohm's law. In this case, we're looking for current, or I. For our output, 
we will need to substitute the values that are given and calculate an answer. When we substantiate that answer, we will see that that's a reasonable amount of current in the correct unit and with the correct number of significant figures.